Yes, good morning everyone. 18th May 2022. <clears throat> Let's find out which are the important articles from today's the Hindu newspaper. Look at the first page. Although we are we were not having this follow-up on this news, Gyanwapi Mosque up till now, but now Supreme Court has intervened and one important law that is in question here. Okay, so there is one article on page number 8 talking or explaining about that provisions of that act here <clears throat> okay because that let's say the law that is there what is the exact name of law places of, places of worship, worship act 1991 right so that law is in question here whether that is applied to this particular mosque in Varanasi okay so instead of having this let's say view from the religious or communal aspect what we need to understand for our examination is the provisions of that law okay that is important for our prelims as well as mains examination okay fine now moving on come to page number six directly editorial page lead article very good article written by Shashi Tharoor, the world must live and work together again from IR section GS2 paper. Okay, the context here is <clears throat> the Ukraine-Russia war and the recent developments including pandemic or before that also how there has been let's say new trend of deglobalization and the several threats to multilateralism. Okay. So, there can be essay topic related to this, there can be general question in GS2 paper IR section related to threats to globalization, threats to multilateral systems, multilateralism. Okay, so we will discuss this article. Then on left hand side, symbolism and beyond. So, recent Prime Minister's visit to Nepal, the context of this article, India-Nepal relations are discussed here. Okay, GS2 paper IR section. <clears throat> One article is written from sociology perspective, but it actually talks about multiple choice questions and all. Okay, social science operates with multiple truths. Okay, so, but that article is not relevant as such for our GS paper. So, we will not discuss that. Those having sociology optional subject, they can read this article. Okay, now come to page number 8, text and context page, Gyanwapi and places of worship tag. In this article only two points we will look into that is why does the places of worship act, sorry what does the places of worship act say and in which cases will the law not apply. This is in question at present in this case. So these two aspects we will cover here for polity section okay gs2 paper on bottom side boon to ban how the wheat export story change in two months again it is important there can be question in gs3 paper mains examination economy part okay so import export and we can say international trade it is part of economy gs3 paper we are having follow up on this news in last two months initially when this ukraine russia war broke out there were concerns related to we can say the food security in some of the gulf countries and other countries they were dependent on russia and ukraine later on india provided the option that we will export wheat to these countries and india was looking into the options it was sending let's say indian missions to these countries for exploring this option but recently what happened is in march and april month there were excess temperatures especially in punjab and haryana region north india region and because of that the overall yield and production of wheat decline okay and the concerns related to the prices of wheat in the domestic market along with that the concerns related to the provisions of internal consumption okay domestic consumption so that's why government had taken this decision to ban the 
export. So we will cover this, we will try to find out the reasons. On page number 9, important concept explain stackflation. Okay, such kind of articles, they are very important for us. They are directly explaining the keywords. They are relevant to our examination. Prelims examination, we can say economy part, stackflation concept we will understand. On page number 10, on bottom side, it is Navy's primary objective to keep Indo-Pacific safe, our defense minister. So, he launched the warships Surat and Udaigiri. Okay, so under which projects uh, these ships were built and uh, we can say launched by Indian Navy, Project 15B, Project 17A, we should know about them. Okay. Now, other news are political in nature. You can see on page number 12, marital rape petition filed in Supreme Court appealing High Court split verdict. So, we were expecting this. Let's see what Supreme Court decides on this in future. We will have follow up later on this. <coughs> yes. Now, on page number 14, Wholesale inflation quickened to record high 15.1% in April month. Okay, in previous week, CPI data, we talked about that. Now, the wholesale uh, or WPI has increased to 15.1% for April month. Again, we'll revise what is WPI and basics of WPI. Okay. Yes, let us discuss these articles. Yes, the world must live and work together again. The context of this article is, in last 4-5 years, several instances have happened which shows the trend of deglobalization and also threatens the multilateral systems, multilateral institutions. Okay, so first of all, we should understand the black backlash against the globalization that took two forms. One, economic other cultural let's understand them when we talk about economic in terms of deglobalization especially in developed countries like us so the poor people unemployed people of us or those developed countries they started questioning their government to you know uh, let's uh, Basically, they were questioning their government regarding why you are helping those people living in other countries by giving grants and donations to those countries or having trade with those countries, giving jobs to those people from those countries. Okay, instead of doing, uh, considering welfare of our citizens. And this led to uh, some kind of protest and the political, uh, let's say, uh, political leaders, political parties exploited this sentiment. Okay. So, this economic aspect is related to this backlash for deglobalization. And the cultural one is related to, we can say, the racial and ethnic. As the deglobalization in economic terms, uh, terms started, the people of, let's say, US or European countries, they started having some kind of, uh, we can say, discrimination towards the Asian people, African people and racial discrimination started. Okay, the violence started and in recent time, you can see various instances of hate crimes are happening in those countries. Okay, so this is cultural backlash for globalization. See, globalization is that term which, you know, uh, we can say used as the integration of the whole world in terms of movement of goods, services, people and ideas. Okay, when the people are also integrating means the cultures are also integrating. The ideas are also, we can say the transboundary ideas are moving okay so that is globalization and there is some kind of trend of deglobalization in all these aspects okay yes when we talk about movement of people basically the problem related to culture is happening right now the populist leaders were quick to seize the opportunity to tap into both kinds of backlashes 
against the globalization and several examples are mentioned in this article okay so for example in 2016 us presidential elections so donald trump came into power so he basically exploited this sentiment and gave the let's say <clears throat> voice of making america great again right so on this uh, let's say statement or america yes america first i'm making america great again so this was the slogan used by the trump or that president and basically similar kind of uh, leaders emerged in brazil in turkey in other countries also okay so the writer is writing in india also but we should not use that term again i'm telling you in answer or essay okay because see he is belonging to other political party simply he is having his personal views but we should have the balanced view okay we can criticize the other leaders but not our government per se regarding this especially okay yes lessons from covid 19 pandemic so what we have understood from the covid 19 pandemic is whenever there is critical situation and the life of the people is threatened we all are dependent on the government okay it is including developed developing countries under developed country everyone understood this first lesson second lesson we have understood here from covid 19 pandemic is we cannot depend on other country for the supply of critical goods and services for example pharmaceuticals or we were very much dependent on china in terms of apis okay so basically this became the problem and this lesson we have understood from this and third lesson we have understood is the global supply chains are vulnerable to such kind of we can say disruptions due to pandemic okay global supply chains of we can say different raw materials intermediate goods final goods okay international trade we are talking about so that was disrupted because of pandemic these are the lessons we have learned and to some extent it has contributed to the protectionist tendencies because whenever let's say the problem is faced by the country country first of all seals the border okay so as to protect its own people right so what we have witnessed because of covid 19 pandemic each and every country prioritized national interest okay including india right then the russian invasion of ukraine what we have learned from this invasion is the sovereignty of the nation is not respected it is not protected it is not respected second thing we have understood here is that the un charter the multilateral body up till now it was has been successful in protecting sovereignty of the nations human rights so basically it is not respected again it is not followed so the the kind of let's say value of this un charter is also declining see this is threat to multilateralism okay so then in addition to that the sanctions on russia by the western world again disrupted the global supply chain or threatened international trade okay so again it is threat to globalization also right now many of our global institutions and their agencies suffer from politicization manipulation lack of representation independent leadership including un so the article is writing the example of who so when this pandemic started in china who did not take strong action towards china that there, there has been significant influence of china on who so politicization manipulation this figure lack of representation third world countries are not having representation you can give example of un unsc un security council it is not having representation of two major continents of the world okay that is southern america and africa you can see that it is completely lack of re representation of significant population and number of countries okay and independent leadership so 
this is very important some of the leaders has been let's say uh, they have played important role un secretary generals in the past but at present we do not have such leadership strong leadership heading these multilateral institutions the phenomenon phenomenon of deglobalization has its regional implications too regional implications the example is given of european union what happened during the pandemic time already before pandemic the brexit happened okay that was threat to we can say multilateral system and all these things but later on the, when the pandemic started all these countries which were having you know free movement of goods services and people they started closing their boundaries for each other's people okay so visa free regime ended during pandemic time in that also when italy was facing major concern if you had let's say followed this pandemic first of all the major toll in european country was italy and italy actually banned the movement of people from other countries into italy at that time at the same time it did not export important pharmaceutical let's say equipments to other countries at that time and this was not likened by all other countries european countries and later on they had sanctions on italy okay so this is what the internal frictions are happening so regional impact of covid 19 pandemic or we we can say deglobalization how it is uh, happening there the sheer complexity and in uh, we can say measurability of our interdependence requires more global governance not less this is very much true okay so after understanding all these threats in the end what we should say is we are already you know moved on to that path of globalization far ahead and we cannot go back now okay we are very much dependent on each other and that cannot be measured in a tangible manner okay one or two or let's say simply in trade terms or something like that in today's world we cannot imagine all countries you know having the boundaries with not mo moving the let's say movement of goods and services and people okay so what we need is more global governance and not less so that's why the promotion of multilateralism and the globalization should be there that's why we as a part of foreign policy always promote the global order based on the global governance rule based order this is what we talk about right even on the the stand that we are having on this russia russian invasion on ukraine we say say the same thing here okay fine so gs2 paper ir section there can be essay topic like this simple emerging threats to multilateralism and globalization or there can be question in gs one paper also there is one topic related to globalization the wording is there but that is from society aspect actually okay that is from society aspect but the article is discussed from ir section largely international relations okay boon to ban how the wheat export story change in two months so in last two months what happened since start we can you know talk about this when the ukraine russia war broke out on 24th february immediately the concerns were raised related to food security of some countries who were dependent on these two countries okay you should know the geography geography in terms of let's say which grasslands are located in ukraine and russia in that region steppe is grassland or temperate grasslands who were cleared for the extensive commercial wheat grain production okay that's why they are considered as granaries of the world around 25% of total wheat export is from these two countries only okay so the exports declined because of war and the countries like egypt and other gulf countries they were completely dependent on these two now they started looking at other let's say market for importing this and india came forward and at different forums india actually said that we will export wheat okay we also started you know 
sending the missions to different countries and there was agreement with Egypt also. Okay, and the consignment is going to Egypt also at present. This is the situation. But in recent times, what happened is in previous month, April and now the May month, we have witnessed the extreme temperatures, especially in northern India, northwestern India, which is the wheat basket of India. Okay, Punjab, Haryana, western UP region. So, more than 90% of the wheat production happens in this region. Okay, so the overall yield decline because of high temperatures. Okay, because of high temperatures, the overall yield declined. The estimated the amount by the government that was around 111 metric tons this year. And recently, government itself reduced this estimation to 105 due to this reason. You can see here, the data is shown in terms of graph wheat procured in million terms. So, if we compare in the previous week to the last year, the same week, you can see here, the blue line is related to, sorry, whether they have shown the season, yes, 21-22 season, orange line, you can see the data and the present data related to this season. So, it has declined, the procurement has also declined because overall, let us say wheat grains reaching to mandis is also declined. Okay. Then the inflation levels of wheat flour in country at present. The second concern that led government to ban the export is the prices of wheat and wheat flour in domestic market. You can see sudden hike in April month or March and April month of this wheat flour. Okay, so and there is some kind of speculation also related to prices of wheat. Understood? So, both reasons. One, yield is low, procurement is low and the second is inflation is high. These reasons has led to, you know, export ban by the government. Understood this? In addition to that, we, uh, we uh, as a part of, we can say, geography student, we should understand the region where the wheat production happens and let's say the excess temperatures climate change aspect is also involved here how climate change will further threatens the food security this can be questioned in your mains examination okay it, this can be questioned in mains examination gs3 paper okay environment section is there climate change threatening food security because this question is asked in geography optional subject it can be asked in your GS also. This is emerging, we can say, challenge, no? Yes. Sir, I think sir, Indian government has also said that if any country's government itself asks mm -hmm. for wheat, then they will be providing. Otherwise, to private members, they will hold it. No, at present, they have given only, let's say, concession to two things. One which has already you know made the pact and agreement like for example with egypt government so that consignment is on its way and second is those let's say agreements or the let's say buying and selling agreements between private sector also before the ban date that is allowed okay so after that it is not allowed it is specifically mentioned okay these two concessions are given but this is, understand that this is temporary ban. Okay, this is temporary ban so that the domestic prices volatility will come down. Okay. Symbolism and beyond India-Nepal relations. Yes, our Prime Minister visited Nepal, Lumbini on Buddha Jayanti. So, we can say that it is kind of symbolism. And this symbolism has been, you know, practice of present government our prime minister with all countries like for example in recent times when our prime minister visited europe or scandinavian nations so he gifted our art and culture let's say important artifacts symbolism okay so same is case with last year kushinagar airport was being inaugurated we invited sri lankan delegation okay because sri lanka buddhism is important so, such kind of symbolism is used by our government, the present government on large scale. 
okay so and largely the symbolism has the component of religion okay culture includes religion also culture includes religion also along with other aspects like language customs food habits dressing style everything is there in culture now along with let's say the prayers and all these things happened in lumbani he laid foundation stone for india international center for buddhist culture and the heritage and the heritage in the lumbani monastic zone now this center will be helpful to let's say as a competition to the chinese investment in that region okay at the same time it will help to promote pilgrimage and we can say the tourism sector at lumbini next aspect is signing of other memorandum of understandings including let's say educational institutions and most important one is the development and implementation of arun 4 hydro project sir, okay it is on which river sir arun river arun and that that is at entering to work from uh, east side yes eastern uh, side kosi yes kosi is different river arun is different river but they are meeting with each other okay yes so arun is having huge hydro electricity potential flowing through himalayan regions uh, uh, himalayan mountains okay so <clears throat> yes now in terms of analysis we should understand that this symbolism should also go beyond and have some kind of realism okay it should go beyond of symbolism and realism realism in terms of let's say economic and strategic spheres economic and strategic sphere the relations between two countries they should progress in these two also in terms of economic two aspects are again important one is hydropower development nepal is having huge potential for hydropower development it is win win solution for when we invest in hydropower because the power can be also imported into india in the neighboring states they get they can have the reliable uh, let's say power supply and also it is we can say the clean source of the power sir it is only cultural and religious ties kind of thing no this is being also developed already we have developed some of the projects infrastructure development and connectivity transport and connectivity this will be helpful for india also because it is landlocked country it is very much dependent on india for import of important or essential supplies so development of transport and connectivity within that country will further boost trade between two countries especially it will benefit the neighboring states of india like uttarakhand uttar pradesh bihar so they will benefit here okay so the economic terms you should write like this and in terms of strategic also you should talk about let's say acting as a buffer state nepal and bhutan are buffer state between india and china yes so india should reach out to nepal from time to time as, as yes both share very good relations since independence we have treaty of peace and friendship 1950 with nepal we have open borders with nepal the people of nepal are having some kind of reservation allowed their let's say they are they are allowed in our indian government services okay so basically very good relations are there but in recent times chinese presence in nepal is increasing especially the previous prime minister okay so he was very much inclined towards china Sir, yes now one more aspect is related to boundary dispute boundary dispute should not hinder the cooperation in other areas it should be resolved through dialogue and deliberation diplomacy kala pani dispute sir correct me if i am wrong sir i have heard like nepal is going to be soon going to be a hindu state right. at present it is not let's say the official declaration is not there although majority population is hindu and there is going to be civil uh, sorry that civil code in uh, uttarakhand 
Yes, the, actually there are talks. Yes, the public discourse is there, but at present the final decision is not by the government. Because yes, the CM of Uttarakhand, he himself had expressed this view. There should be u uniform civil court there. Okay, fine. Now moving on, stagflation, the concept in economy. <clears throat> As the word suggests stagnation and inflation. Stagnation in terms of economic growth and then inflation. When they simultaneously occur in the economy, that is stagflation. Now, before 1970s, this term or this situation was unknown. But the oil shocks in the early 1970s, that led to this situation in US, where there was stagnant or low economic growth and very high inflation. And that led to changes in the economic theories. Okay. Now, the idea of stagflation is closely linked to Phillips curve. One more concept for prelims examination. Hmm. Yes. So, according to Phillips curves, when unemployment is high, inflation is low. And when unemployment is low, inflation is high. So, they have inverse relation. The graph is like this. Okay, so unemployment and inflation. This is the, let's say, Phillips curve. Now, according to Keynesian economist, unemployment in an economy rises when the wages fail to drop quickly enough to adjust changing economic conditions. Now, here we are going in depth understanding this concept. According to Keynesian economists, they feel that the wages do not go down according to the economic situation suppose there is low economic growth recession is going on but simultaneously wages do not go down they are sticky and therefore the business or employers businessmen and employers they what they do they reduce the number of workers working instead of reducing the wages so this leads to unemployment this leads to unemployment. Okay, the workers are seen as unwilling to accept a cut in their wages, thus forcing businesses to let go some of their employees in order to adjust to higher wages instead of trying the lower wages. And this can affect the overall output in the economy as fewer people are now employed. Economic growth is affected. Along with that, unemployment is there. The rational expectation model was one of the alternative models proposed to explain stagflation. And it is against this view. Let's understand that. Okay. <clears throat> According to this model, workers could not be as easily tricked by the central banks as assumed by the Keynesian economist. Tricked in terms of having the same level of real and nominal income. Okay. So, when there is high inflation, the real income is very low. Although the nominal income may look high when the wage revision is there. So, if it is in line with inflation, real income remains same. Only nominal income increases. Okay. So, simply we should understand that this tricking cannot, be, let's say, be accepted by the workers. Workers will soon understand that we are having low real income or same real income okay so simply understand that the proponents of rational expectation school argued when the workers observe that the prices rise at certain rate over time they are likely to demand higher wages in order to beat price inflation and at least maintain their real wages okay so this we should understand Simply if suppose, if suppose I am working at Lukman IS, I will give you example. So if I feel that there is very high inflation, the general price rise of goods and services is increasing and whatever the monthly income I am earning, that is not let's say in line with that inflation. Mm -hmm. Then soon I will understand I need the wage hike or we can say salary hike. Okay, so I will demand to the institution that uh, you should raise my income. This real realization happens to worker very soon. So workers cannot be tricked into, we can say, increase in the price hike in, in the same manner or at the low 
as compared to we can say inflation rate okay so this is very important concept and uh, the remember these theories but upsc may not ask this one the detail explanation this two are important philips curve and stagflation understood okay wholesale price inflation quickened to record high of 15.1% in april month okay so especially the perishables such as fruits vegetable and milk okay it is driven largely by spike in fuel and food prices so crude oil prices are already high then along with that because of that petroleum and let's say petroleum products its prices are high food prices are high fruits vegetable and milks in within the food also along with that it is also talking about let's say retail inflation in the food grains that to wheat also okay so that has also increased it is mentioned in the article just remember the trend earlier also i had told you there is increasing wpi in last 3 4 months okay sir hmm. there is no need to go into the technicality of this one which one technicality in terms of only two things one thing the factual aspect second thing is why it is increasing in which areas it is increasing reason you should know okay wholesale price index very simple it is the general price levels of the goods that are calculated at the production level producer level that's why wholesale compiled by office of economic advisor under ministry of commerce then base year is again 2011 12 it is not mentioned here i guess okay 2011 12 is base year for cpi as well as wpi it is calculated on year on year basis it is compared with the same month of previous year but cpi is basically month on month basis it is compared with previous month okay now it has three major groups and the maximum weightage is given to manufactured products primary articles fuel and power manufactured goods and weightage you can see here maximum to manufactured products number of products are also more there in manufactured products okay total 697 articles or goods are considered to calculate this ha likh lo likh lo fast okay yes now it is navy's primary objective to keep indo pacific safe our defense minister was inaugurating or speaking and at the launch of two frontline warships at masgao docks limited in mumbai okay which are these two warship surat the fourth and last ship of project 15b destroyers project 15b destroyer had four such ships to be manufactured warships by the masgao docks and then the other one udaygiri the third ship of project 17a stealth frigates this information is relevant to our prelims examination okay now yes gyan wapi and places of worship act so we are talking about the recent let's say issue that is going on in terms uh, in the ganwapi mosque supreme court intervened and the state let's say it has asked the protection to that particular place within the mosque where it is being said that the linga is found there along with that we should understand it has also said that the worship by the muslim community should not be obstructed or stop in the mosque now what is important for us for polity section what does the places of worship act say okay so the provisions of this 1991 act says or uh, it relates to freezing the status of all places of worship in the country as on august 15 1947 freezing the status means it cannot be altered okay the worship places cannot be changed destroyed for the reason that let's say usse pehle koi aur cheez thi ya jagah thi ya aisa kuch tha 
so simply understand that this cannot be changed the status the act says no person shall convert any place of worship of any religious denomination into one of the different denomination or section Which is this was not followed in case of babri yes the specific we can say exception is given in the act related to babri masjid we'll talk about that okay it contains a declaration that place of worship shall continue to be as it is on august 15 1947 and significantly it prohibits any legal proceedings from being instituted regarding the character of the place of the worship and declares that all suits and appeals pending before any court or authority on the cut off date regarding the conversion of character of place of worship shall abate okay so there cannot be any case in the court also related to this but recently the district magistrate in the varanasi had order the video survey of the mosque so that now has related to controversy related to this act now what are the exceptions given look at this in which cases the law do not apply the specific exception is given to the ancient and historical monuments and archaeological sites and remains that are protected under ancient monuments and archaeological sites remains act 1958 they are not covered under this second it will not also apply to let's say finally settled or disposed of any dispute that has been settled by the parties before 1991 act came into effect so if it is already settled the matter then it is excluded from this the act specifically exempted from its purview the place of worship or commonly referred at that time as ram janmabhoomi babri masjid in ayodhya so that the appropriate solution to this case uh, we can say the scope for negotiated settlements was kept there sir it was added earlier sir it was not there earlier only Yes, at the since start itself, original provision exception given. No, no, 1991. This act is 1991. Okay. Anyone contravening to these provisions had, let's say, provision of imprisonment up to three years under this act. Okay. So this this is relevant here for our prelims examination. Okay. What should be answer to this one? yes wholesale price index correct statement it is used as a measure to understand inflation at consumer level incorrect that is cpi at production level it is wpi it is compiled by office of economic advisor this is correct it considers the prices changes in both goods and services yes so only goods not services cpi considers services consumer price index okay so you should know about this nitty gritties of indices so two only is correct answer b any question from your side yes, yes. 